it will take i'll i'll explain actually okay very good good morning to all of you and welcome to the session um, so i am kanak and uh, my friend um kyan hua we both from huawei and uh, we work in um openstack heat and we are core viewers so in this slide i just capture the things required to prepare um so uh, we have two parts uh, the first part is a learning um and second part is the tutorial so during a learning uh, sorry uh, during the learning time uh, you can prepare the setup so it will take uh, 30 to 40 minutes so we can utilize properly hope everyone um uh, got the details so the same uh, information is available in the etherpad uh, like uh, Asking iPhone Heat, so we can get it from there. So I'm moving to the next slide. So let me move to the next slide. I hope everyone having the details. I'm sorry. Uh, slide I will yeah, upload at the end of the session. just keep in note of that austin iphen heat that etherpad link so that has the same detail um okay that's a common thing like installing the dev stack uh, like clone no i don't just clone the dev stack with that uh, local os file whatever is given um so i will move to the next slide i hope everyone having the detail for the setup okay so today like uh, we are going to see uh, the overview of the heat and uh, uh, more detail about the um uh heat orchestration template schematics and um, how we can validate and we'll we'll see more detail on the heat features of uh, auto scaling and uh, um software deployment and configuration uh okay i'll i'll just go back to the slide Okay I'm expecting like uh, everybody aware of the dev stack installation I'm sorry if it's not so you just uh, um for a dev stack installation you need a local rc file so I kept the required uh, local rc setting in that uh, second link so you can make use of that uh, for installing the dev stack for installing a dev stack uh, just uh, google for <coughs> dev stack so it will just give you one link to clone a repository once you clone it you can make use of the local rc to start the installation it's very simple yeah but the first week we start the vm image yeah you just that download keep it with you and it will be during the tutorial session it will be required for you see first first is the image which is required for tutorial and second link gives you the detail on a local rc file required for the dev stack okay so everyone knows like uh, heat is that an orchestration service for the open stack um so by using heat you can bring um on the top of open stack you can bring anything as a service um so anything can be anything so heat mainly helps to orchestrate and it supports uh, its own the life cycle of that uh, application cloud application so for model the cloud application heat provides the template template you can be in the um json on the yaml format um uh, okay so when you provision um each cloud application heat represent them as a stack so once you model the cloud application in a template you can provision as many um stack as you want it's similar to uh, aws cloud formation service 
So he does uses the um, uh, its own um, uh, native template. It's called heat orchestration template. Uh, it has its own schematic. And in this session, we'll be uh, learning more about that schematic. So it has a different sections and parameters, and it helps to uh, input the um, uh, input the uh, template. And uh, it has certain intrinsic functions which help you to manipulate or reference the data across the uh, things in the template. And it has uh, um, environment, resource type, and it, it has the support for the prototype template. So we'll see more detail about this each of this uh, section in detail in the following PPT. Okay, so let's see about the uh, schematic. Okay, the first thing uh, required in the um, uh, hot template is the heat template version. Okay, so the left side, it will give the details about the each section, and the right side, you will see the sample template, how we can form it. So, so far we have um, this many um, versions supported in the heat. So, the first thing what you do when you're creating a template is that heat underscore template underscore version with whatever the uh, template version you want to use. So usually the template version will match with that um, uh, uh, the release date almost. And second section is the description. So the description part, now you can capture all the detail about the template, the purpose of the template. Say suppose if you are um, using it for um, say deploying something, you can capture the detail about that in the description. So you can keep uh, the second section is the description where you can mention about the uh, purpose of the template or some prerequisite to use the template. What are the things you want to uh, give detail about the template? You can keep it in the description section. And third section is the parameters. And <coughs> so it, it helps you to get the inputs from the user and then use it in the template. So parameter have its own schematic. So parameters section will have a list of parameter and each parameter can will have all these um, attributes. And type is the important, I mean, mandatory attributes. So type can be a string, or it can be a number, or even it can be a JSON format. And if you have a list, you can give it in a comma-separated list. And even it, it, it can be a Boolean value also, true, false. Okay. And second thing is the label. It's a basically, um, it's a human readable uh, naming. You can give it for the parameter name. And if you want to give more details about the description, like how you are giving description for the template in detail. So for a given parameter, if you want to give, you can give as, the, in the, as part of the description attribute. And say uh, you are the, one of the parameter is a flavor. And if you want to keep the default flavor value in the template itself, so you can use the uh, attribute default. So once you uh, assign the value in the default, uh, it is not uh, mandatory for the user to give the input while creating the uh, stack. So the heat will go with the default value uh, represented in this parameter section. Okay, and there is a special attribute called hidden. Okay, so moment you mark the parameter as a hidden, say password, okay. And once you give the input, suppose if you want to see the value of that uh, hidden parameter, it will just mask and will just show start or start. So anywhere if you want to um, hide, I mean, uh, password kind of uh, parameter if you want to use, you can use the attribute hidden. Okay. So you have a parameter, and if you want to validate it, the value, whatever you are giving, so you can have a consents list. So consents can be, uh, okay, there are some uh, default consents uh, given by the heat itself. So you have a, you can have a length. We'll see more detail as we in the following slides. So you can have a length or the range or the allowed values. Even you can go with some custom constraints. And you have immutable. You can set it as a true or false. So once you, mm, you set it true, you cannot change the value. Okay, 
So in a sample on the right side, like in the sample template, say you have a flavor, you can set the type string, you can give some um, description, give some default value. So when you look at the constraints, it has uh, something called consume constraint, nova.flavor. Okay. This is um, already um, implemented in the heat, so you, uh, you can make use of that. So when you set the custom constraint to nova.flavor, uh, um, when, uh, when the heat uh, validates the template, it will check for whether the given value is proper flavor. Otherwise, it will fail it. So similarly, you can have an image volume size. This is a sample thing. So it depends on your template, you will have uh, um, the input parameters here. Okay. Say you have, um, you, your template is um, huge and uh, it does many things, and you want to group the parameters into your groups. So you can make use of uh, parameter underscore groups. So it will allow, you can have as many group you want. In each group, you need to uh, see the list of parameters it grouping. So you can say like a VM inputs, uh, it groups the uh, flavor and the image, and then volume inputs, it's, uh, um, uh, it groups the volume size. It's not the real world example, it's just uh, to show how we can use the parameter groups. Okay. So we have like, uh, so far we have seen like uh, we can tag the template with the required version, the schema version, and then you know how to, um, how to keep the uh, purpose of the template in the description. We know how to uh, give the inputs for the template, okay. Now we'll, this is the, now we'll see how to model the cloud application. So the moment you say cloud modeling the cloud application, it involves so many resources, you need to bring them together and declare it here. So for that, we have a section called uh, resources. So under the resources, you have a list of resource. Uh, like uh, parameters, uh, the resource also have its own list of uh, attributes. So one of the important thing is uh, the type. So type will tell you like, uh, like uh, whether it's a uh, Nova instance, whether it's a Cinder volume or it's a glance image, etc. It has its own way of um, uh, naming the type. We will see in detail later. Okay, and e obviously like each uh, resource will have its own properties. So properties will have a name value pair. And you can associate uh, metadata uh, with the resource. So in heat, you can keep uh, metadata for each resource part of the template. And it has a special flag called uh, depends on. So using that, uh, so say you have in a template, you have hundreds of resources, and uh, there are dependency among those resources. We can, uh, hard, uh, he can, we can hard code those dependencies using depends underscore on. And we have two more, uh, two more policies, like uh, deletion policy and the update policy. Uh, these two attributes helps how you want to delete or update the resources during um, the operate, uh, like either del deleting or updating. It's very specific to the given uh, resource. Say you want to um, control like, um, you, uh, um, so during the update, you want to handle in specific manner according to that uh, resource type, you can keep them under the update underscore policy. So in a sample template, uh, say we have an instance, if, when you look at the type, it's um, OS uh, double colon Nova uh, double colon server. That's the way you can mention about, uh, uh, you can represent the type. So first we'll have the OS is the, um, the provider, uh, whether it's AWS or the um, uh, OpenStack. And then second will part will have the, uh, the respective service. And the third part will have the uh, actual uh, resource. So you have a list of properties. So in, in case of server, you are seeing like image, flavor, like it depends on the type of the service, uh, sorry, type of the uh, resource, you will have its own properties. So say you want to attach uh, like a volume with a given instance, so you will be having one uh, Nova server type and one Cinder volume and one uh, Cinder volume attachment resource. These are the three uh, uh, resources you'll be having in your template. Okay, so now you model your cloud application in part of the uh, resources section. So now you got the input, you modeled it, okay. So when it is um, when it is created as a stack in the heat, obviously you want to get the output from it. 
say you want, so you are deploying your own web application at the end of the day, once it uh, created, you want to uh, return the, say, IP address port, the, the com uh, URL. So you can keep them in the output section. So outputs, again, in the, it's a, it will have a list of outputs, and each output will have the description. You can, uh, like you can assume what is the purpose of description, and it will have the value. So if you look at here, for the instance net, okay, so you created a one instance with the volume and attached to it. Now you want to give the, um, uh, the IP address of the instance created. So you can keep it in the one of the output in this template. Okay, uh, so now we know like what are the different sections and um, what, what each section is meant for. So we'll see in more detail in the following sheet. Okay. So, and we saw the parameters, uh, it has a, its a parameter constraints. So as I mentioned earlier, there are inbuilt constraints as well as the custom constraints. Um, so length is one of the uh, inbuilt uh, constraints, so you can have a min and max value for it. And similarly, if you want to keep the range, also you can keep it using the range. So again, it will have a min and max. And allowed values, say um, you want to uh, validate the given input parameter against the list of values it can <coughs> hold. So we, um, you can use the constraint allowed underscore values. And similarly, if you want to um, validate the input with the given rejects, you can go with the uh, allowed pattern, allowed underscore pattern um, constraint. So on top of this, uh, heat provides uh, these many uh, custom constraints. So if you look at um, custom constraints will be given for each service. So every uh, service will be uh, given with a list of concern, custom constraints required. So on top of that, Okay, it's not highlighted here. Say, for example, IP underscore ADDR and ISO underscore 8607. These are all not uh, service-specific things. Some utility constraints also provided by heat. So all this information um, is already available over the internet. So I will share you the detail uh, at the end of the session. Okay. So on, on top of this um, parameter, uh, heat provides something called pseudo-parameter. So these are the uh, pseudo parameters. So if you, anywhere in the template, if you specify like OS uh, double colon stack underscore ID, you can get the stack ID. Sometimes it's useful when you are uh, doing auto scaling, this one. Similarly, you can do it for a stack name or the project ID. So say you have created a, a stack. Once you created a stack, you want to see the value of this pseudo parameter. You can just uh, do um, open stack, stack so, so it will show you the uh, uh, value of these uh, parameters. You can get it from there. Okay. So next, um, heat provides uh, an intrinsic function. Its main purpose is, say, you want to reference across the resources, or you want to do some data manipulation, or you want to reference the input or the um, output in the, uh, within the template. So for all this purpose, the intrinsic functions are uh, um, implemented. Okay, there are so many uh, intrinsic functions. And um, so this, um, uh, this slide captures like uh, for each uh, template schema version. So what are the uh, intrinsic functions supported so far? So if you look at here, uh, the down part is the um, AWS way of conven uh, convention, mentioning that, okay. Almost um, when heat was introduced, um, we had a, um, very similar to the um, AWS convention, okay, and today uh, we have similar functionality with uh, um, heat native uh, functions. So in the top highlighted all only applicable um, uh, for the hot template. and. Uh, so if you want to know like uh, the given function is when it is, when the support is enabled or whether it's available, uh, support is available in the given schema version, uh, you can refer this uh, table. 
See, for example, uh, when you use the second version, uh, 2014, 10, 16, obviously you cannot use uh, digest or repeat uh, 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 intrinsic functions. Uh, when you are using that, uh, the latest one, like 2016, uh, 4 or 8, so it's a Mitaka uh, version, so it has all the support. I mean, uh, in this template, all the intrinsic functions are supported. And almost all the AWS way of uh, using the uh, intensive function uh, support is removed. So let's see more detail on the um, uh, each intensive functions. Okay, the first category is the referencing the data across uh, within the template. So first is the, uh, the get file. Okay. So what is the purpose of the get file? So when we are when we are creating the template, say for a deployment, you will be having, uh, with, with the template, you will be having so many additional um, uh, additional uh, data, which may be captured in the files. Let's say config information, say some script. So all those things you want to um, uh, get the, uh, I mean, refer and get the value of these uh, uh, files in, within the template. So that's where uh, you can use uh, get underscore file. So in this case, for the Nova um, server uh, resource, for the feeding the resource data, you can keep the um, uh, user data uh, as case in a separate uh, shell file, and then you can just use this uh, get underscore file to refer it. So it will help you to bifurcate the things into the different uh, files, and then make uh, templates simple and maintaining easier. Okay, say um, uh, when you are creating uh, uh, the stack, you are feeding with the um, file um, user underscore, uh, sorry, user data dot sketch, and whatever the value you are feeding there, and, and uh, he should be able to use an in user underscore data uh, properties. Okay, so for that, when, whether you are using the uh, CLI or the REST API, so uh, he provides a section called files, in the um, HTTP request. So in that, uh, so when you are using the CLI, CLI will read the data and then keep the map of uh, full path to that file and then actual content. So once that, uh, the, once this files map go as, as part of the request to the heat, so heat can easily refer across. Okay, so next is the heat, uh, the, sorry, get underscore param. So this one helps, uh, so uh, we saw like there are parameter section to, helps to feed the input. So once you, uh, once you define all the parameter list, you want to get the value of it in the respective um, resources. So where you can use the uh, get param, okay. So in this case, uh, take the example like a, um, instance type and we have a, um, a server data. There are two input parameters, okay. So it's getting used in the uh, resource my underscore instance. So the flavor, you can get uh, get underscore param of the instance type, so in the red color. And if you want to get the um, uh, metadata, you can, you can set from the server underscore data. So in the JSON, you can keep capture um, like key value pairs. So Whatever is there in the server underscore data, within that whatever is metadata, it will be assigned to metadata properties in the instance. Similarly, you can use the key name. So if you look at here, so you can use the get param for referring as the key, like a key value, or even you can take a list from there, you can index by numbers. So heat param supports both. So the get underscore param supports both the convention. So when you when you feed the input with the with these values, um, and then so the same will be assigned here. So the one of the flavor will have um, mn dot tiny, and the metadata will have like foo bar, and keys will have a underscore key. So now we know like get underscore param. You can use it uh, with the map as well as the list. How we can use it. Okay, so, so for uh, d reference, um, you have two things. So for uh, mainly for the input purpose, uh, get file and uh, get underscore param. So and uh, there are uh, many uh, manipulations functions, uh, data manipulation functions given by the heat. Uh, let's see one by one. Okay. So 
it's a map merge. So you have like a two map. Um, so and you want to merge them together for some purpose. So you can go with map underscore match. So when you so in this case, let's say like a k1 v1, k2 v2, and again you will have like a k1 v1. So it will merge them together. So the final result will be on k1 and k2. These functions will be very handy when we are when we when we hit the situation where we need to manipulate the data within the template. Okay. Second is the uh, string str underscore split. So first is the uh, splitting character we want to use whether your comma or a colon whatever it is, and second is the actual string. So it has it is taking the indexing also. So once you split, if you want to take the given indexing. Say um, no, data at the position zero or one, two, so you can mention it as a third parameter. So it will give the result. So in this case, uh, string to split is um, separated by the comma, and uh, we asked to give the first string, so it gives the value string. Okay. The next one is uh, str underscore replace. Okay. So it has two uh, properties. One is the template, another is the params. So in the template, you can keep the real um, string, what, uh, whatever you want, with parameterized. So if you go to any language, uh, it support parameterizing. So the parameterizing the string. Okay, similar to that, here also you can do in the template. So we are having here like a host colon port slash v1. So in the parameters. The value you are giving, like uh, with the IP address and the port, so finally will give the uh, it, it will give the result of the uh, actual URL with the IP and port. So, for example, I just assign the value for a host and for a port here. So those values come from any different place. It can be like a get underscore param. So you can say like uh, you can get these two values from the user, and then you can use get underscore param of IP get underscore um, uh, param of port. So we can use like that also. OK, the next um, function is the uh, list underscore join. OK, like a, a steer underscore split helps you to split and then get the uh, required values. And uh, list join is like uh, joining the given list to one string. So first is the uh, character to join. And we can have as many uh, list of list as you want. So it will join all them together using the first character, whatever you given. Okay. Repeat is like a for function in any language. Okay. So it has a for underscore each, and it's like a um, uh, nested loop kind of thing. For the first line of uh, you can keep as many for uh, underscore for underscore each. You can keep as many. Uh, nested you want so for uh, we know how nested works right so for feeding the value for the uh, parameterizing so it is the template as the uh, uh, the value given in the template so in this case we have a port on protocol that's given with uh, what are the values given in the port and uh, port underscore range underscore mean so when it is um, going through the looping the result will be like this on the right hand side so the protocol on port underscore range underscore mean, you have four sets with whatever the value you given. Okay. So for manipulating, we have like four, um, four or five uh, functions. Uh, so you can uh, like uh, split or join or you can uh, repeat or you can merge. So, and we have a uh, utility function called digest. So, uh, basically, it helps with uh, different um, hashing uh, algorithm. So, it, it supports uh, with uh, what I mentioned here. Uh, the, uh, this many hashing support is available now. Okay. So, now we know uh, how to uh, get uh, input parameters, uh, input values, uh, and we know how to manipulate things. And we saw some um, um, utility functions for digest. And now we'll see the um, dependencies uh, reference function. And these functions will be uh, 
mostly used in any even given sim simple template. Okay. So get underscore resource. Suppose uh, one resource is depending on another. Um, uh, say um, for creating uh, uh, instance, uh, first you want to create a flavor or you want to create the network. So, so for creating flavor, you may have one resource in the template. And for creating network, you will have one, another resource in the template. So once those two are created, then only we can go for creating the instance. So if that is a requirement, we can in the get we can make use of the get resource. So if you look at here, for the port, it is getting the um, value from the instance underscore port. Uh, it's highlighted in the blue color. Okay. So when we are mentioning like this in the template, heat will know the dependencies between them. It will make sure that first instance underscore port is created. And whatever the ID uh, it created, I mean the in, uh, port ID, you can get the at ID and assign it to port in the uh, instance resource. So for that purpose, you are using uh, get underscore resource uh, intrinsic function. So we saw one uh, like a depends underscore on. So that's a hard code way of uh, putting the dependencies. And when we are using get resource, heat will itself will uh, make the dependency among the resources. Uh, by uh, by itself. Okay. Second is the get attribute. Okay. So you have a resource, and uh, once uh, the resource is created, and each resource will be given with a set of um, attributes. If you want to reference that attribute, we can make use of the get underscore attr. Okay. So in this case, um, say uh, we created the server and. Uh, for the, the, we want to output the server um, IP, uh, private IP address, so we can make use of the get underscore attr. So we can use uh, two way, like um, like how we saw in the get underscore param. So we can directly uh, reference by uh, given key, or if it is the value is the list, you can index by numbers. Both are supported. Okay, so there is a sp special uh, intrinsic function. Say, uh, usually, like uh, when you are referring, like um, uh, referring one resource or another resource as output. But suppose um, when we are having a, um, a temp, uh, like multiple templates, and uh, we'll we'll see more about that um, child temp um, provider template later in the session. Um, so oh, in heat, what we can do, we can bifurcate the uh, templates uh, into uh, logical templates. And um, so uh, there will be one uh, parent template, and within the parent template, you can have a child template. So all the child templates, you can call it as a provided template in heat. OK, so in the parent, uh, see the example of parent template, it has the um, like metadata update policy and deletion policy. So from the parent template, you want to reference these values in the child template. So you can make use of this uh, resource underscore uh, facade. So with this function, so only these three um, uh, attributes are supported today. So uh, metadata, update policy, and deletion policy. OK, this is not the intrinsic function, but it helps you to make the uh, dependency among. Uh, depends underscore on. So this is, uh, as we know already, it's uh, like a hard bound way of telling that, OK, one resource is depending on the other resource. So once you mention that uh, depend underscore on for a given resource, so the heat will make sure the dependency among them. So in this case, it will try to create the instance two and three. Then only it will go for creation of the instance one. Okay. So now we know like uh, the purpose of intrinsic function and what are the different um, kind of intrinsic functions available. So to, to, to summarize, so you have data manipulations. And uh, you have uh, functions for a uh, digest. Um, so you have uh, functions for uh, referencing across. And you have functions for uh, like getting the input as a from parameter or the file. OK, let's talk more about the um, resource type. OK, so we know, right, the resource type is uh, the one which is mentioned the template under the resource section. Each resource will be tagged with the type called resource type. Okay. So what is the resource type? So if you take any service, takes a Nova uh, as an example. So Nova has so many uh, entities supported, so like a flavor or the server, etc. 
So if you want to model uh, each of these uh, entities, we can go for a resource type. And not only that, if, suppose if you want to, uh, in your um, use case, if you want to implement your own proprietary things, you can implement your own resource plugin for it, for the given resource type. Say, uh, like OS uh, double colon, say demo colon, so blah, blah. Then you can implement on resource uh, plugin and then put it in the heat. We can make use of in the template. So basically, it helps to model the uh, um, uh, entity of a given uh, service. Okay, so it's always represented like uh, first part will be the cloud provider like OS or AWS, then the service name followed by the, the actual resource. Okay, so every resource type has uh, its um, its own supported uh, life cycle. Um, uh, okay. Heat supports, uh, we know, right, heat supports the uh, life cycle of the uh, stack. So correspondingly for the life cycle of the stack, it will have a respective life cycle uh, things in the resource type. So you can create, update, delete, or you can um, snapshot or uh, restore, and then you even you do some check, stack check, and then uh, you have uh, abandon and adopt. Okay. So um, in the, while we are seeing about the, uh, um, the uh, schematics, we saw that um, each resource have set of attributes. So and uh, um, it has uh, attribute called properties. Okay. So properties will have a list of um, a property, and each property can have these uh, attributes. So each property will have its own type. As mentioned, it can be like a integer, string, number, etc. And we can, well, we can say whether the property is updatable um, during the stack update. Uh, if it is not updatable, um, we can mark it as uh, no. Uh, default, it is every property is updatable. And uh, default, every properties are uh, marked as not required. So if you feel that um, property is uh, required, then you should mark it as S while implementing the uh, resource type. And it has, uh, it's like a metadata and um, where <coughs> Uh, you can uh, associate uh, um, a resource with the given list of metadata, and then uh, deletion policy, update policy. We know the purpose of uh, these policies already. Okay. So take the example of the uh, resource type server. It has a properties, and then the properties will define, like uh, this uh, image is the property name, and its type is string. Constraints, it says, uh, glance.image. Okay. This is the schema for this resource type. So when you are using this resource type inside the template, so you can use like this. So type, you will say whatever is the type given by the schema. And under the whatever the properties it is there, um, OK, I'm sorry. Here, uh, the image will come under the properties uh, attributes. There's a mistake. Okay. Sim similarly, um, you know, each resource type will say like, um, uh, when I created, I can give this many list of um, outputs. Output also we can uh, tag with uh, type. And there is a special attribute called show. So when you use uh, show, uh, um, what he does, so say like uh, g um, uh, get underscore attribute of show, like in this case sample. Uh, so if you use that, uh, what he does, it will hit, will uh, get the actual um, um, properties of that uh, sample instance from the Nova and give it back to you. So um, uh, OS uh, Nova server defines the attributes called first underscore address. It's of type string. So if you want to use that attribute in the template, so we can use like that. For, so we'll use the intrinsic method called get underscore ATTR, and then you can use it. OK. Um, heat provides something called uh, environment. OK, so if you want to customize your template, specific to your environment, say whether you have a test environment or the production environment, if you want to customize, you can put all those customization in the environment. So heat itself is as its own um, uh, predefined uh, global environment. So you can define that in the um, heat conf file under the environment underscore dir. And if you want to the your user specific environment also, you can feed. So when you are creating a stack, you can uh, give, uh, you can give the uh, environment file. 
So heat will make use of that environment file. So when you are using the heat stack create, you can give uh, like if an e parameter. Okay. So environment has the section like um, like we know like in the template has section called parameters. Similarly, environment has the section called uh, parameters. So in the parameters, you can uh, mention like um, say in your template you have flavor and image. And um, in your environment, say on test environment, you want to use a uh, different flavor image, and then uh, production environment use a uh, different flavor and image. So you can capture them under the parameters. And when you are feeding this um, using the iPhone E parameter, and uh, heat will automatically take the values from it. Okay. Next is the uh, resource registry. Okay. Basically, um, this is where you can do the customization on the resource types, okay. So if you know like uh, in past we have um, quantum as the um, uh, network service and then it renamed to the neutron. So during that time, so if you, you have a template with the OS double column quantum and if you want to map them to the uh, neutron resource type, you can customize it in the uh, in, um, resource registry. So that's called um, uh, resource mapping. So next is the overriding the resource, okay. So for a given resource type, you have a default implementation and you want to override it for your purpose. So that's also uh, possible here. So under the resource registry, you can uh, give like what is the type you want to override and next to that, how you are going to override, okay. So here we given the path to the one, one YAML file, okay. Um, okay, this YAML file is the uh, provided template path, okay. So whenever you are using this uh, AWS EC2 instance, so it will make use of the um, uh, provided template as a resource type. Okay. So the path can be either file or it can be a, a URL with HTTP. Okay. And the, there is a convention, okay, that uh, the template should be either with uh, .yaml or it should be with .template. Also, you can override for a given uh, resource name in the template. So if you want to say like a db underscore server, you want to customize it, you want to override it, you can override like this. So either you can override by the type or you can override for the given resource in the template. Okay. So restricted actions. So mm, currently we are supporting update and replace. Okay, so. When you are updating a template, sorry, uh, updating a stack, say you want to uh, restrict the update for a given resource, okay? So you can restrict by using restricted underscore actions. So wherever the DB underscore server you are mentioned in the template, and those resource will be restricted with update and the replace. Both actions will be uh, restricted. For the restricted actions, okay. Um, okay, in generic, suppose um, you want to stop the update, okay. Uh, you created the resource for some purpose. You want you don't want to update. You don't want to allow the update. So in that case, you can go with the restricted actions. Maybe I will I will give you the uh, real um, use case maybe later. Let me give you, okay. Okay, and underneath uh, we have hooks. So hooks basically, okay, whenever the resource is created, um, so you want to um, do something before and after creation. It's like uh, more of like uh, the Tosca template, um, it has the uh, um, lifecycle actions. So similar to that here, if you want to uh, do some actions uh, before and after, uh, you can make use of that. So you have like a pre-create, update, delete. Similarly, post-create, update, and delete. Okay, so you, you can use like um, uh, the actual uh, resource name or you can say like uh, with the regular expression, with star. So wh whatever the matching with star underscore server, all of them will be um, applied with these restricted action hooks, whatever mentioned here. Okay, so we have even uh, things as another feature in the heat. Suppose, um, okay, today what's happening when you're creating a stack so all the events is going to the heat database 
and then you can query by um, stack events. Okay. Instead of that, say you want to um, listen for the uh, events uh, over the RabbitMQ or over the messaging uh, service. So you can make use of the syncs. So um, each uh, event sync has the type, and then you can say the target is a queuing um, uh, name, and then uh, TTL is the confi uh, configurable parameter in it. So earlier we saw like um, um, part of the uh, session, we saw the use of the provider template. So it basically it helps you to bifurcate your uh, bigger template into smaller logically. So it helps you to um, easily manageable. Okay. More than that, um, the resource type you can, uh, sorry, using provider template you can make use of, you can create the uh, new resource type. See, for example, in the environment, when you are seeing the environment uh, slide earlier, so we saw that, okay, um, you can say one resource type and then you can override by the provider template. We saw it, right, in the earlier uh, previous template. So that you can do with the provider template in place. Okay. So you, you can reference the uh, a new resource type directly, either by mentioning the um, uh, your, the template provider template itself. So in this case, what are we have done? We have we have one provider template my underscore nova, and we are directly referencing this by the name file name. That's the one way of doing it. So another way of doing is using the environment. And it's seen the earlier uh, slide. So in environment, you can say this is my type. And this is my provider template, and when you are using that, you can when you say type like OS Nova Server, instead of going uh, making use of the actual plugin implement the heat, it will make use of the my underscore Nova YAML. Okay, let's see how we can access the attributes of the um, uh, template resource. Okay, so in this case, say my underscore Nova is the provider template, and the uh, left side whatever you are seeing is the uh, parent template. And you want to get the attributes from the resource in the provider template. So by missing, making use of the get underscore attr, so we can make it, uh, like you give the um, uh, resource name followed by the resource dot, and whatever the um, serve, uh, uh, resource in the child provider template, and then give the real, I mean the, the attribute name, whatever you want to access. Okay. See, for example, uh, when we look at in this case, so what we have done as an example, so for the OS uh, Nova server, we mod instead of using the uh, actual plugin, we model with the provider template. Okay. So, okay. So once you created this uh, template, whatever in the left hand side, so it will actually create the server. Okay. Okay. So when you are creating the server, say you want to um, you want to get the um, See, for example, you, you you want to get the ID ID of that server. Okay, so when you are saying like OS double colon stack ID, when you are assigning it, actually you are getting the server ID. If you don't assign like this, so the OS underscore stack ID will give the the stack ID of the parent uh, template created. So transparently, if you want to um, uh, make the uh, resource ID available like this, we can go. With So, so far we know like um, what, what are the different schematics of the hot template and uh, we saw in detail about each of them. Okay, so you created a template, every time when you're creating a template you will get it into so many issues. Okay, so for valid, so to validate the, um, the template, heat provides uh, its own command. So either of these two com command you can make use of it for validating it. So we have a legacy um, command heat template hyphen validate and then you can give the template file. And um, the same feature is enabled now in the OpenStack uh, CLI. So you can go with the orchestration template validate. So either of these command uh, perfectly work in the Mitaka, so you can make use of it. Okay. So you created the, um, um, so you created the uh, template and by making use of this, um, one of these command, you can validate it. So once it validate, uh, as a um, output, so as part of the output of this command, 
will give the list of input parameter for this template. It will tell like what each input parameter, what is the type, and what each constraints it hold for. And uh, the preview. So before creating a template, it's better to run this command to see the preview. So when you're running the preview, you will come to know what's going to happen when you're really creating it. So it will show you the almost uh, all the attributes of each resource as part of the template. Okay. Okay. So so, so now we know the like uh, what is uh, yeah, heat orchestration template. Okay. By using the heat orchestration template, um, uh, every feature provided in the heat. Uh, is uh, implemented okay so using the resource type um, heat implements the auto scaling so auto scaling is like uh, say in a given scenario you want to um, scale up or scale down based on the uh, your uh, criteria so you can go for the auto scaling uh, software configuration deployment helps you to deploy your um, your applications uh, via heat and so and we have a resource grouping. Okay, say for the same resource you want to create in numbers, say like uh, 10, 20, you can go with a, a resource grouping. And a remote stack, it helps you to do the stack creation across the uh, regions. Okay, it has some special uh, resource type called a non resource. Okay, like as programming, like uh, um, as for, for some, some reason, you can mark a variable equal to none. Similarly, you can make a resource using the um, uh, resource mapping. You can, um, uh, sorry, resource mapping, or you can call resource overriding. You can, in the environment, you can say the given resource type, you can um, override to none type. So basically, it does nothing. During the testing, so you want to mask some um, uh, types, you can make use of it. And it gives the random string as the uh, utility uh, resource type, where it, most of the time when we are generating the password, we would be expecting the random um, password, so we can make use of it. And wait condition uh, mainly helps during the uh, deployment. So you created uh, some, you started to create a, um, uh, a resource, and you want to, you don't want to wait till the resource is created by the backend. So what you can do, you can make use of the wait conditions. Okay, once the backend creates its resource, it can signal back to heat. So for that, you can use the uh, wait conditions. So, and using the environment, as we saw already, uh, we can make use of the heat, sorry, hooks for uh, doing some pre or post uh, life cycle operation, as well as you can make use of for the breakpoints. Okay, so out of these uh, features spread by the heat, so we'll see more detail about the auto scaling and uh, software deployment as we go forward. So what's time? So hope now you all be having the setup ready. I'm not sure. So usually dev stack take uh, 40 minutes to one hour and the uh, image is downloaded. <laughs> okay, so we'll, okay, then we'll take some more time. I will go through the auto scaling and software deployment. Okay, and the end of the session, maybe we'll see the thing. I'm sorry, actually I tried to um, give this pre-request before all of you coming here, but I failed to find a way how to do that. <laughs> uh, if, if not everyone is having uh, like a dev stack setup, maybe like whoever is having maybe group together, it will be helpful. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have the setup I can show you um, like during the demo. But it's good to, like, if you have your own setup, you know, it helps to learn. So one way is, like, uh, we can group, and then whoever is having, we can go with it. So now we'll, um, before going to detail about the auto-scaling, like, uh, like to take questions, if you have. OK. So let's see uh, more detail about the auto scaling. So auto scaling helps. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I failed here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So. 
So obviously, you are changing some uh, detail about the resources. OK. OK, so while doing the stack update, it will try to see what is the current state of the stack and whatever the update, whatever you are given. So whichever is the resource required, it will see the uh, those resources are required update, and it will go for update. Say one resource does not uh, require any update, it does not do anything. Right. Uh, okay, so your question is like uh, for a resource one, you mentioned the restricted action as update, then it won't allow you to update. So it basically helps you to control however you want. Okay, so auto scaling helps. So, so in your the template obviously will having flooded with uh, resources and uh, obviously resource will be like compute storage network for a given scenario you want to like uh, scale down or scale up you can make use of the auto scaling so the moment you say um, uh, auto scaling somebody has to monitor your resource and then um, when it's reaching your predefined threshold it should tell to hit that okay the threshold is reached so basically the auto scaling is um, uh, implemented um, with heat with one of the monitoring service, either Solimeter or uh, Monasca. So it has uh, uh, four or five uh, resource type for the auto scaling. Okay, let's see um, uh, auto scaling based on the Monasca. So first, you will define the scale group. The scale group will have the the resource it needs to be scale up or scale down. Okay, so. You will have then decide capacity. The first time when I am creating, I can tell okay, I want two instances or I want say ten instances. How many in, uh, resources I want in the scale group? You can mention in the decide capacity. Okay. Obviously, then you can set the max and the min boundaries. So when it's scaling up, say you set for like twenty, it won't go beyond twenty. So when you are setting the minimum size is five, it does not go beyond five. So by using these properties, you can uh, control the size of the um, scaling group, the initial size, how much it can grow, or how much it can shrink. And it does use the outputs uh, attributes. So using the current size, you can get what is the current number of resources in the scaling group. And uh, scale, uh, we know like scale scaling group has a list of resources in it. And you want to see the um, output of all these uh, uh, resources in that group. So you can make use of outputs. So it will give in the map and outputs list. It will give in the list. So the next is the scaling policy. So how do you want to um, scale during the um, uh, event happen? Okay. So when I am scaling up, okay. Say I want to uh, add two instances. Say I want to add only one instance, or I want to add like three instances. So how many? Uh, are how much? I mean, how I want to adjust the scaling group. So all these things you can capture in the scaling policies. Okay. So the scaling adjustment will have like plus or minus, or I can say whenever I am, um, whenever I'm, I'm hitting the threshold. Always keep my number as given number. I mean, given n. Say I always my count to be 10. You can um, you can uh, um, set like that also, or I can uh, like uh, say in percentage. And it has something uh, called cooldown. Okay, so basically the um, the cellometer or the um, monasca will. Intimate um, uh, heat via the scaling policy. Okay, so when the signal comes to the heat, okay, heat does should know like um, whether I can proceed for the uh, scaling. So we can control that using the uh, cooldown. So it's basically a timing window. Say now I am in uh, progress of scaling, and one signal is coming now. I should not do the scaling. So when we are designing the template, we know how much time approximately it will take for uh, scaling. So based on that, you can set the cooldown time. 
and it has auto scaling group id and it, um, it will be um, referencing the auto scaling group so it has uh, two outputs one is the alarm url another is the signal url um, uh, in heat you can um, s signal the uh, stack either via um, there is uh, two apis available one is the cfn api another is a heat api so however you want to um, uh, signal the heat so you can make use of one of these attribute so okay the scaling group and scaling policy is common uh, across whether you are using a monosca or the selimeter okay when you are using the monosca you will have a notification as a third uh, resource so notification will have the address that is nothing but whatever the alarm or signal url you created as part of the scaling policy so on fourth one is the al um, alarm definitions okay this is the one which is going to define you in the monosca what is the threshold i am setting for my uh, scaling group okay i can set like uh, um, when my uh, scaling group reaches the cp threshold of this uh, this much either you do scale down or scale up in that um, so whether you you want to scale down or scale up you can do it in the alarm accents so if you want to scale up you will be having one policy for scaling up so this alarm definition will have a, a reference to up scaling policy similarly for the uh, scale down um, you will have another uh, threshold definition okay and it, it will have its own um, scale down policies you are um, alarm url so these are the four um, uh, resource type you will be uh, using uh, in the uh, auto scaling okay so um, so once you model this uh, auto scaling template and created it uh, heat will create the stack okay once the stack is created it should monitor it so while monitoring uh, the open stack should be able to associate uh, between i mean the monosca should be able to um, identify the resources in the scaling group and then find the threshold among the all those um, uh, resources in the scaling group so for that uh, we need to um, um, bind the threshold whatever you are defining in the definition as well as whatever the me uh, metadata we are putting in the resource so look at here whatever the um, uh, resource part of the scaling group will have a metadata it's called scale underscore group so there you can keep the stack id to, to get the stack id you can use the get underscore param voice uh, double colon stack underscore id so that same stack id is used in the alarm um, expression so if you look at here in the expression is having the scaling group equal to stack underscore id so th this is how the monosca binds the matrix collected by itself with the scaling group so more detail about this is captured in the um, i mean uh, expression details captured in this link given here i'll share the ppt once session is done and i have demoed the, um, the same in the um, last summit so there is a video available in the open sec site so you can go through it okay so for selimeter is the same the scaling group scaling policy are same there is no difference whether you are using selimeter or the monosca so only difference comes is how you are going to define the threshold um, and uh, how you are going to trigger so in case of um, um, monosca you will define two things alarm definitions and then uh, notifications so in selimeter you can mention both in one uh, resource type called alarm okay the difference is uh, how you are going to uh, define the threshold so monosca have its own way of doing and selimeter having its own way of doing so how to define the threshold is captured in this wiki so based on that wiki you can define the threshold using the, um, uh, this uh, uh, resource type okay so in in this case the alarm accents uh, will have that uh, url whereas in uh, monosca uh, the notification had the uh, um, reference to the scaling policy like um, in monosca case uh, the um, uh, binding is happened using that uh, scaling underscore group so here 
uh, we need to use the metering dot stack as the uh, metadata when we are using Cilia meter as the um, monitoring service for auto scaling. And uh, in the um, alarm uh, resource type, you need to mention the same stack ID in the metadata dot user underscore metadata dot stack. So this is a difference like when you are using Monosco or when you are using the Cilia meter. The rest of things are the same. So in addition to that uh, cellimeter um, alarm, so he, uh, in heat we are giving um, additional uh, support. Uh, okay, so if you want to uh, combine the alarms, uh, you have like, um, so you have two alarms created and you want to um, aggregate them, you can do it. So these are the features supported in the uh, cellimeter side. So all those support already uh, enabled in the heat. So based on the your requirement, either you can go with a cellimeter alarm or whichever the alarm uh, resource type uh, suits your need. Okay, let's see the workflow. Okay, so in first place, you deployed the heat monosco the cellimeter and your, uh, your uh, deployment is ready. Okay, so now you, you form the template of the auto scaling, <coughs> so you feed it the heat so what's he is going to create the required things in the cloud and then it, it set up the uh, monosco the cellimeter with whatever the alarm definition or the alarm or the notification whatever you mentioned in the template so once this is in place okay you created the cloud applications and the monosco the cellimeter started to monitoring it so now auto scaling is started so from this moment based on the um, threshold you defined in the alarm definitions or the alarm and the monosco or cellimeter will identify that event happen and threshold exceeds, then it will start to create an alarm. So once you know, so something's happen, I mean threshold is reached, so it found then monosco or cellimeter creates the alarm. So once alarm is created, whatever the um, signaling you mentioned in the template using the signal um, the signaling policy, that um, that alarm URL or the signal URL it will invoke. So those are the webhook uh, in the Monosco or the uh, cellimeter side. So it will hint, it will signal the heat, and now heat will go and do the auto scaling based on whatever you define the scaling policy. Okay. Suppose um, you do now it happened like a threshold is reached. Earlier it was 2 vm. Now heat is increased this to 3 vm. Okay. Similarly, like um, okay, now 3 vm has come up. Okay, load, um, uh, now the load com is reduced, okay, after some time. So, and your lower threshold will be meeting. So, once the royal th threshold is reached, again, it will be, uh, um, monosco cellimeter will create an alarm, and it will trigger the scale down policy. So, when the scale down policy comes, one VM will be uh, reduced. So, this is how the auto scaling works. Uh, any questions? Okay, no. okay, we'll move to the um, software deployment. Yeah, my friend will take over. Uh, okay, the following I will introduce you how to config software on servers in your stack. Uh, in general, there are three options we can to do this. Uh, including custom image building, user data both scripts, and software deployment. So I will describe each of these options and we we'll give some examples. Okay. Uh, the option one, customer image bu building. Uh, the first uh, opportunity to inference what software is configured on servers is by booting them with a custom build image. Uh, I think there are a number of reasons uh, you might do this, including the boot speed, boot reliability, or test verification, or configuration dependence. Since the required software is already only image, so 
there is no need to download or install anything at the boat time. And the cast image will reduce the failures such as uh, uh, transient network failures and in consistent software repositories. Also, the custom image uh, can be verified in your test environment before being promoted to production. And uh, there are a number of tools are available for building the customer image. Mm, today in our session, we will use the disk image builder. Okay. Uh, the option to use the data boot scripts. When, a server, when booting a server, it is possible to specify the content of user data um, to be passed to that server. And how the user data is consumed uh, depends on uh, the, the image being booted. And uh, the, cast, the most commonly used tool for uh, default uh, cloud image is the cloud init. So uh, let's see the snippet of the template. For the uh, Nova server resource, there are two properties, uh, user data and user data format. We can uh, set the Boot scripts in use the in use data property, and the content should be the uh, share scripts and cloud config, or part handler, or other format, uh, which is supported by cloud init. And for use data format, uh, we have three values. For default values, hit save and tools. Uh, the use data is bound as a part of the CFN tools uh, boot data. Uh, it is compatible with the AWS cloud formation. And for low, the use data is passed to Nova unmodified. And for software config, uh, the use data is bound as a part of the software config data. Okay. Um, Often there is a need to uh, pass the parameters to the boot scripts. So uh, this can be done by the function string replace. And when the boot scripts grow bigger and bigger, uh, it is difficult to maintain the contents inside the template. So uh, you'd better to put the boot scripts into a separate file and then use the git file to get the content of the user data. Also, the user data can be managed as their own resource. Uh, then the uh, Nova server can reference the resource uh, of a config resource. Uh, let's see the base, base code config resource. Here we have two property, group and config. For group, uh, this property uh, determines what uh, tools will perform the configuration. And config, we can set the um, string configuration uh, to this property. Okay, here we can use the get resource function to reference the software config resource to a in user data property. Uh, there, there is another config resource. We say that cloud config. In this resource, you, only, uh, you can only set the cloud config user data in this resource. And also, we can reference uh, this config resource in user data property of the Nova server. And sometimes uh, maybe you want to combine several config together. So there is a, a resource named multipart memo. And such as this uh, resource can combine the 
software config, uh, config and cloud config together. And then uh, this uh, multi-part memory source can be referenced by the user data property of the server. Okay, uh, then we will talk about the option three, software deployment. Uh, you know the, the uh, software config resource is used for storing the config data, but this uh, software deployment resource is used to associate the config resource with a, a server. And this resource uh, around runs uh, any number of the software configuration to be added or removed from the server throughout its life cycle. So let's see the um, software deployment resource. There are uh, several important properties, config, server, input values, and uh, action, um, signal transport. Okay, first the uh, config. Uh, we can define uh, config resource and uh, uh, reference the config resource in uh, conf config property, such as the uh, sof software config. So get, use the get resource to reference. Okay, the server property, we also uh, get the resource from a Nova server. Uh, here we can see light. For Nova server, uh, if you want to use the software deployment, you should set the user data format to software config before you use the software deployment. And for input values, uh, you can assign input values to config, that config scripts. Uh, also, the deployed actions. Uh, this property decides uh, which action of the software deployment will trigger the um, software deployment. The last one, signal transport. Uh, this property is uh, determines uh, how the how to signal to hit with the deployment uh, results. Uh, or you can say the output out values. Okay, um, before you use the software wheel deployment, you uh, sh must to build the customer image uh, first. Uh, we can do the steps following. Uh, PEP install the, the two disk image builder and uh, get column uh, triple image elements and uh, hit templates and export some uh, elements required. And then you can use the disk image create command to uh, build the custom image. Okay, let's see the workflow of the software deployment. Uh, the step one, a uh, use call heat API and stack create with the hot templates. And um, based on the templates, heat will create the uh, config resource, uh, Nova server resource, and uh, software deployment resource. And when the uh, server is booting, the cloud init will consume the uh, user data. And then step four, the engine elements always correct uh, config or start to pull the metadata of configuration from hit. And corresponding hooks will perform the configuration data. And then if uh, the configure software deployment is done, the um, hook, the Tools will signal software deployment resource to tell the deployment result. Okay, uh, this is the workflow of the software deployment. And as mentioned, the software deployment runs to uh, any number to 
uh, con software configuration to be added or removed throughout uh, the uh, lifecycle of, of Nova server. So if you want to change the configuration of the server, uh, we can take the step seven and code hit the API stack updates with a new template. And then the step four to six will repeat. Okay, uh, so there's some useful reference and uh, our nickname in IRC. So thank you. Try to capture the sample, uh, simple template uh, in this uh, GitHub. Uh, GitHub, uh, we have captured the sample templates to learn more about the uh, hot schematics. Okay, this is not the uh, real use cases, but we can use this for learning about the uh, hot schematics, whatever we learned today. So, you can try out uh, some templates now. Um, I think we have 10 more minutes. So, I'll just, uh, I followed some conventions. Uh, for example, if you go to your template, um, so each template will give a description on how to make use of it. So in some, some template, uh, we intentionally uh, left some errors. So when you're trying, you will uh, see the errors. Then how to fix the errors, uh, we given the steps in the description part. So you can follow it and then um, you can fix it. So uh, you could see like um, there are uh, sample templates for the parameters or the intensity functions, some outputs. And uh, we have given a simple and uh, sample template for uh, auto scaling as well as the software uh, deployment. They're also available here. So the eighth one is the um, auto scaling template and the ninth one is the um, software deployment template. So to use that template, uh, whatever the image you have downloaded, you can make use of it. Yeah, auto scaling uh, is a limiter. Do I also need Monosca? No, Monosca is not required. So for Monosca uh, based on um, auto scaling, uh, we have covered one session in the last summit. So what I will do, I will capture the link for this uh, PPT and that uh, Monosca sessions, um, as well as uh, this uh, session uh, URL in the etherpad, whatever I shared earlier, like uh, Austin iPhone heat. So maybe like uh, uh, you can uh, refer the um, etherpad in a week at time. So everything should be available there. So let's try some template. Um, So l let us see a template. Um, so to be in a valid template, so if you have just the heat template version in it, that's sufficient. It's just a valid template. Um, so description part, um, you can, as we, we know now, right, like a description, we can keep all the details for the template. So to see like what are the template schema supported in a given deployment, heat deployment. So there are commands available. You can 
just run, run those command and then uh, see. See, for example, to th uh, in this deployment, let's see whatever the thing supported. So in this uh, deployment, we have uh, this many um, supported version. Uh, okay. So there are two uh, supported uh, type. One is CF1 and then uh, hot. So um, we can see like uh, there are like two, three, four, five, six hot uh, schema versions are supported. So if you create a template with any of these uh, template version, uh, it should be able to understand and then take it forward. Okay, so this uh, template will help you to learn about the, um, the resource type. So for the resource type, um, we have kept, uh, there is a, a link, I mean, uh, th there is a documents available over the internet. So we can refer this uh, URL where you will get all the uh, resource type, uh, type supported uh, in the um, heat. So, let us see how to validate it. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how to do, let me try. Control plus. Not working. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So let's take the initial one. So when you are validating the template, uh, it will give the. Okay. So we hit the error. So I given the wrong uh, template version. So it says I don't support it. So let's just go and change it to the right version. So now we know like how to get the list of supported versions. So I will just change this to eight. Why are you, uh, like, where did you get the open stack orchestration as the command? Here? The command, okay. So in OpenStack, uh, um, every service is trying to um, put the uh, like CLA feature in the command OpenStack. So we have enabled in Mitaka, we have enabled for the uh, heat. So OpenStack CLI guide will tell you like how we can use it. So, so when you are doing, uh, using the validate command, so it will give the list of parameters um, uh, uh, defined in the template. So once you validate it, you will come to know, okay, these are my parameters, I should be aware of it. Okay, so let us um, do the stack preview. So for doing uh, the stack preview, we have a new command in the uh, OpenStack. Uh, it's called uh, dry run. If and say, let us take the uh, second template where we had the um, resource type in it. Okay, then give some name, uh, demo stack one. So what it does, um, so, so if you look at here, heat will go through all the resources in the template and we will try to depict you how it will be when you are creating a, a stack. So when you use the validate, it will give the list of input parameters. And when you do the dry run, that's called a preview, it will show you how it's going to be when you are creating the um, stack. Okay, uh, let us see some other example. 
okay i will i will show you the um, maybe the cellometer that will just little bigger so we will get to know many things okay i'm not sure how to increase the size is size okay so um, if you look at here um, we have a list of input parameters like uh, flavor image and the uh, network and uh, you have uh, uh, resources so we know like uh, for auto scaling uh, there are uh, four main resources are uh, will be used so in our case first you will define the scaling group with the initial capacity and then the range of like well, how much maximum it can go how much minimum it can go so then you will define the scaling policy so for scaling policy obviously we will have a uh, two policies one for uh, scale up and one for the scale down similarly you will have a uh, um, alarm definition also so in our case we are using uh, cellometer so you will find uh, two alarm one for the low and one for the upper limit so i, I already created this uh, um, uh, stack uh, for the cellometer so let's see um, some detail about that stack okay so the stack name is um, as let us see how many resources are there in the list in that stack so what are the resources you have seen in the template so all all them are like um, uh, created uh, in the respective um, backends and those are captured as a resource so we can see like uh, there are two um, scaling policies and two alarms the one group so if you say nova list okay so in the alarm um, uh, sorry scaling group i um, mentioned like uh, the minimum range is 1 maximum is 3 i think so after i created this stack um, scale down uh, event is triggered and when the scale down event is triggered um, it uh, brought the count to 1 from 2. So if you want to know like um, when the scale down is happened, when the scale up is happened, so heat provides a command called event list. So when we do the event list, you will come to know what happened. I think I created this uh, quite a while back. So we can see here there are so many um, uh, uh, like uh, event happened like on the scale down policy. Um, so many uh, signaling has happened from the cellimeter side. Okay. So what happened? What might happen? So I created a stack. Okay. In the stack uh, VM, I'm not doing anything. So when first it created, it was created with the two instances. Okay, so cellimeter started to monitor them for those two instances. When the um, threshold come down, okay, so it obviously has to down the um, count to one. So it was started the uh, um, scale down to one resource count one. From that moment, for um, so it will keep on monitoring. It may it's it seeing that okay, threshold is less than the defined threshold. So it will keep on. Uh, signaling the heat saying that okay uh, this stack uh, threshold is uh, reduced but when it comes to the heat heat knows that the scaling group uh, minimum size is one it cannot uh, reduce beyond that so how many times um, the scale down comes uh, um, that doesn't matter when it reaches the uh, scale down uh, lower limit Okay, I, so I think uh, that's all, all today's um, uh, hot session. So I will capture the uh, required document details in that etherpad order I given. So uh, please try to make use of it. Any questions to take? Yes. 
now i will in the etherpad i will give the link so you can download from there okay thank you very much thank you Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, I just captured this uh, hostname dot sketch on how to make use of the get file. So it does not do nothing much. Um, so if you go here. So here I have a reference. This it's just for the tutorial purpose I kept it. Yeah, we can discuss in detail, like based on like, offline. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you.